Okay, so just very briefly, uh, who um, am I representing? I'm the director of the Australian Urban Research Infrastructure Network, or in short. Uh, we are uh, Australia-based and we are funded by the Australian government to uh, support research on urban and infrastructure systems in Australia. We do this through accessing and sharing how to get data, including commercial data, uh, to do things which are defined by everybody's problem, no one's solution, uh, avoid duplication as much as we can, and foster collaboration. Um, why? What are the big uh, impact we want to contribute to? Uh, it's the impact of climate change, energy transitions, demographic change on cities, infrastructure systems, and regional communities. Uh, just a very small uh, scope, scope. So obviously, uh, when we talk about urban system and, and, and infrastructure systems, we, we have to look at what these urban digital twins are. And I'm not sure of the situation in, in UK and Europe, even if I was there uh, early June. Uh, but in Australia, nearly every state now uh, is developing its own uh, digital urban digital twin. So we can see some visualization here from Victoria, New South Wales, Queensland. The federal government developed its own version called the Digital Atlas of Australia. But um, if you ask me, um, having been in the GIS game for quite some time, what we're looking at here are no, nothing more, nothing less than shopping carts, data shopping carts behind uh, pretty fancy uh, 3D GIS layers. Uh, the information is, is still layered uh, behind, uh, behind the scene and there's nearly no dynamics happening, which is not bad on its own if it is the first step towards something far more ambitious. And that's probably my, my, my call uh, to everybody on, on, uh, on, on this call today, uh, because we need to be able to do far more if we really want for these things to be real digital twins. And for the moment, again, uh, in an Australian context, um, we still deal with, with a very fuzzy concept derived from industry, and I'll come back to it. We're using a broad range of technologies, mainly GIS, as I mentioned, for the state-based and, and national uh, um, digital twins, but also some research uh, attempts around ABM and base modeling concepts, for example. Most of the time, we're still talking about weak business cases so far. And this is mainly due to high transaction costs in the back end, not the visualization. And these high transaction costs are mainly due to poor data accessibility, weak semantic inter interoperability, limited technological reusability, hypothetical system scalability. But more importantly, and at the core of the rest of my presentation, is the fact that urban digital twins aim at representing urban ecosystems. Ecosystems include flows and functions, whichever ecosystem you think about. And cities are meant to serve and host people. And I think this is the big missing piece uh, in what these digital twins are about for the moment. Where are the people and what they do in cities? So let's step back. I, I talked about industry concepts. So an industri industrial uh, digital twin, like a Rolls-Royce engine you stick under an Airbus or Boeing plane, I understand it. It's an ultra realistic representation. It's a structural digital copy. Every bolt, nut, wire is in there. Uh, it's an integrated functional simulation with uh, ability to have real time comparison, feedback to real system as uh, Rolls Royce does with all their engines, uh, turbines uh, in each plane in the world. Um, and you can have objectives which are pretty clear. It's performance and quality control. So then you can design a digital twin because these are your clear objectives. Ingredients are very simple. All the virtual components, all of them, you don't, you don't ask yourself whether you, put, you should put 100 or 1,000 or a million bolts. You get all of them. The resources, you've got virtual fuel, virtual power. You've got functions and flows. This, is, this I can understand. Now let's try to translate these concepts into the world of urban digital twins. And that's where we start to face major problems. And everybody around the world is facing the same problems for the moment. On the industrial digital twin, like a turbine, you're dealing mainly with physical assets, where for cities and urban systems, you deal from day one with physical, biological, and human assets. On the left-hand side, you've got well-identified components, as I mentioned. On the right-hand side for cities, 
we still struggling with loosely identified components. We're still discussing the size of, of the bolts and nuts we need to include in our, in our urban digital twins. This is where we are. And on the left-hand side, we've got a closed system, uh, laws of physics apply, uh, predictable behavior, reliable monitoring, accessible data. Unfortunately for cities, we've got an open system by definition. That's what a city is. You have to deal from uh, the onset with laws of physics, but also biology and psychology with people involved, unpredictable behavior, sparse monitoring at best, poor data accessibility. You're moving on the left hand side from a complex world and rules of complexity and can be translated into equations. On the right hand side, you're dealing with a complicated world and we don't have the equations for that yet. So you're going to tell me, well, <laughs> you can stop here, Pascal, at the end of the presentation because we can't do it. No, some people 24 years ago did it. It was a game. It was called SimCity, as we all know here. Um, and if you think about it, and I read many scientific papers about SimCity because I'm fascinated about the generation of it, and everything's in there, the fixed assets, the moving assets, the people, the cars, the water, the electricity, the governance, the economics, everything is in there. And it uses multi-agent uh, uh, architecture. It uses uh, gaming visualization. Um, and the uh, next generation called uh, City Skyline is even more sophisticated. You're going to tell me, okay, Pascal, this is a game. I'm going to do this with reality. Well, people around the world start to cluster and, and trying to find a, a way to deal with this problem. First, it's about the architecture. And, and I think we all agree now that it has to be a distributed uh, architecture, uh, probably based on multi-agent system uh, characteristics. And, and uh, following the, the John Postel law uh, that we should all remember, the robustness law, be conservative in what you do, be liberal in what you accept from others. Because in this case, we can have truly distributed architectures where several groups can contribute to the same model. And the, I, like, I like the Power Rangers when I was a kid. So um, there's four powers I can see for this new next generation of digital uh, urban digital twin. We need to, in, to uh, include geospatial dynamics. They're not there for the moment, except very, very few exceptions I'll mention. Second power is the hybrid modeling paradigm. We need to be, bring together, um, of course, agent-based modeling, for example, but also system dynamics when you've got systems that are more constrained. And why not general equilibrium whenever needed, for example, for economics or for global uh, climate models? Th third power, social and behavior, uh, social behavior and inter interaction. This is missing in all the urban digital twins I've seen so far. And finally, because we put people into it, we need to be able to enter participation and validation with the people we represent, one way or the other. If we can achieve that, then we're getting closer to something that could be really be called an urban digital twin. You can tell me again, Pascal, you're dreaming. So, well, no, there's a few people in Singapore, where I started that 10 years ago. Uh, it's called now Cooling Singapore 2.0, uh, uh, or now they've got a new name, the Digital Urban Climate Twin. Um, and Digital Twin is just coming into the fold very, very recently because it's it's a fashion. Uh, but they, they're the first one to say, but this is just a model orchestration, the thing we've been doing for 10 years. And they've got a mesoscale representation of Singapore including climate, including, as you can see on the left-hand side of that slide, uh, all the dynamic models that they can gather, uh, pre-existing ones and some they've created ad hoc, but most of them are just reutilization of existing ones. And they've got a micro-scale version of it. So now the, the, the next step for them is to blink the global to the mesoscale to the micro-scale. But all the bits and pieces are already there. So yes, it is possible with reality to come closer <laughs> to something that's a digital twin, like SimCity, and get these kind of results. And that's it for me. Next question is my question um, for Pascal. Um, this is a very loaded question. It looks very open and simple. So should governments make their data open and how should it be made available? Easy one for you there. Uh, again, in, in the Australian context, 
Um, and unfortunately, we're, we're not as well advanced uh, as UK and, and some parts of Europe in, 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 in that uh, game. Um, I mentioned the digital twins that uh, many states in Australia are investing significant amount of money into. And as I said, they're just shopping carts behind uh, a 3D GIS, very, very sleek one, but it's only that. Unfortunately, most of these digital twins now have two faces. There's the public one. Um, which has, yeah, interesting data, but not this thing that we'll get into the next generation digital twins uh, I've just called for in my presentation. And then you've got the private section, which is the government facing section. And this is where all the interesting data uh, about infrastructure and other things, uh, some near real time data uh, is for them and shared only within government people. So there's this weird process where in a context where we're supposed to, and these tools are supposed to open data to the public, actually we're re-encapsulating public data in the first place uh, because it's sensitive, because, and again, I prefer, as I said, we, we, we as Orin, we have a mandate to get the heart to get data and, and share them with uh, researchers. It's easier for me to negotiate with the telcos, Telstra, Optus, and others in Australia. Um, than governments, because governments will, will come with 10 different reasons uh, why not to share this type of data or this other type. So yes, but.